Please open in your learning workbook to page 134 as we solve a problem involving graphing a quadratic function when the equation is given in standard form instead of vertex form. All right, here we go. Find the vertex of the graph of the quadratic function. Determine whether the graph opens upward or downward. Find any intercepts and sketch the graph. The equation we're provided is f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 12x. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is to recognize the form of the equation that we've been given. This looks like the standard form for a parabola, ax squared plus bx plus c. It does not look like the vertex form of a parabola. You can see that the vertex form of a parabola has those parentheses with an exponent of 2 there, which this is missing. So we are dealing with the standard form. And therefore, the method that we need to use in order to graph this is to use our formula to find the vertex. Okay, so the first thing we notice here is that a is equal to negative 2. And the second thing we notice is that b is equal to positive 12. c is absent. That term is actually 0. Okay, we need to know a, b, and c to plug into our formula. So the formula for vertex is opposite b over 2a for the x-coordinate and c minus the fraction b squared over 4a for the y-coordinate. Whenever you write this formula, be very, very careful. Do not put the c subtract in the numerator of this fraction. It's c subtract, then the fraction b squared over 4a. Okay, let's plug in what we know. So opposite b, so that would be the opposite of positive 12, which would be negative 12, over 2 times a, so that's 2 times a negative 2. There's our x-coordinate. For the y-coordinate, it's 0 subtract fraction b squared, so that's 12 squared, over 4a, 4 times negative 2. Okay, now we're going to simplify. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. When it comes to the y-coordinate, however, you want to be careful. I'm going to teach you a rhyme that I would like you to follow. You should always do the fraction before the subtraction. I'll say that again. You should always do the fraction before the subtraction. All right, so let's do the fraction over here. I'm going to put this in my side workspace. So we've got 12 squared divided by 4 times negative 2. 12 squared is 144. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 144 divided by negative 8 is negative 18. So this is going to say 0 subtract negative 18. And we know that subtracting a negative is the same as adding, so this will become 0 plus positive 18, or simply 18. So we now know that our vertex is 3, 18. This tells us h and k. Of course, we already know a. We found that earlier. So we can now make our x, y table. Okay. So whenever we craft parabolas, we always put our vertex in the middle row of our table. So the 3, 18 goes here. To find the other x's, we need to use the denominator of a. Well, a is an integer. It's just negative 2. So to write that as a fraction, we need to write it as negative 2 over 1. And then this denominator value here, this 1, tells me how to find all of my other x values. So 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Going the other direction, we subtract 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so now we have all of our x's. To get our y's, we plug into our equation. f of x is the same thing as y. So our equation is y equals negative 2 x squared plus 12 x. Let's start with x equals 1. 
So we get y equals negative 2, parentheses 1, close parentheses squared, plus 12, parentheses 1, close parentheses. Following order of operations, we do exponents first. 1 squared is 1. So we get negative 2 times 1 plus 12, because anything times 1 is itself. Multiplication is next, so I get negative 2 plus 12. And then finally the addition, and I get 10. Now remember, parabolas have symmetry. So we're expecting that when we plug in 5 for x, we're going to get the same value of 10. So let's do that one next. If x equals 5, then y equals negative 2, parenthesis, 5, close parenthesis, squared, plus 12 times 5. Order of operation says the exponent comes first. 5 squared is 25. Negative 50 plus 60 equals 10. And that's exactly the value that we were expecting to get. So that gives me confidence that we are solving this problem correctly. All right, let's plug in x is 2 and x is 4. If x equals 2, then y equals this. 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 plus 24 is positive 16. All right, last one. If x equals 4, order of operations, 4 squared is 16. Multiplication, addition. Okay, so now we have all of our x, y values for our chart. With that, we can make our graph. I'd like you to notice that there are no negatives anywhere in this chart, which means our graph will be entirely in quadrant one. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need to go a little higher here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, let's plot our points. So we've got one comma ten, so that would be here. We've got two comma sixteen, so that would be here. Three comma eighteen, that would be here. 4 comma 16, 5 comma 10. And this is a parabola. It opens down. I know that because the value of a is negative. My vertex was right here at 318. I can label that. And so that's what my graph is going to look like. Okay, so let's see what we've done so far. Determine whether the graph opens up or down. It opens down. Uh, sketch the graph. We've sketched the graph. Find any intercepts. Okay, so the intercepts is the last part of this problem. Remember that the most important characteristic of an x-intercept is that y equals 0, and the most important characteristic of a y-intercept is that x equals 0. So let's see if we can find both of those intercepts. Let's start with the y-intercept we know that x equals 0. Replacing x with 0 in our equation, we get y equals negative 2 times 0 squared plus 12 times 0. Negative 2 times 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0. So when x equals 0, 
y equals 0. That gives us another point that we can put on our graph. 0, 0. So let's add a dot. The origin is one of the points on our graph. All right, that was the y-intercept. Now let's find the x-intercept. All right, with an x-intercept, y equals 0. Remember, f of x is the same as y, so when we replace y with 0, we're actually replacing f of x with 0. So we get 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 12x. This can be solved by factoring. On the right side, the GCF is negative 2x, and when we take it out, what's left inside is x minus 6. I'll check this with the distributive property. Negative, negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 2x times 6 is 12x. Now using the zero product property, I get that negative 2x equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0. Dividing by negative 2 on both sides, subtracting, excuse me, adding 6 on both sides, gives me two x-intercepts, x equals 0, x equals 6. Now remember, both of these started out with a y of 0. So when we have x is 0, y is 0, that gives us the ordered pair 0, 0. And when we have x is 6, y is 0, that gives us the ordered pair 6, 0. So you'll notice that we got 0, 0 again. Why? Well, because it's both an x-intercept and a y-intercept at the same time. So it makes sense that we would get that answer twice, once when we're looking for x-intercepts, once when we're looking for y-intercepts. But 6, 0 is new to us, and that gives us another point that our parabola is going to go through. This gives us the ability to create a more accurate sketch. We now know more points that our parabola goes through. So I'll go ahead and extend our graph here to reflect that. Okay, with that, I believe we've completed this problem. It opens down, we found the intercepts, and we sketched the graph.